Hey guys, it's Sebastian from Ask Sebi, and today we are going to look at the Apple credit card. We're going to go through the video point by point and then talk about each of the features. In case you are someone new to the channel, we are all about how to maximize your cash back and travel value from everyday spend. We'll talk more about that towards the end of the video, but something to keep in mind. Starting at the top of the video, one of the big points is that they want to focus on analytics. So showing how much you spend every week, every month, and on different categories. And also if you want to dive into the details of the specific purchase, where it was, they also give you that information. For me, I think this is a really good thing. I'm a fan of having more information at ease and easy to understand for more people. I feel like most people don't really keep track of how much they spend and where they spend it. So having this information at your fingertips is just very helpful. And yes, there are other tools that allow you to do this, but it's not built into the experience. Moving on to the next point, they talk about daily cash. This means that you are going to get cash back right away instead of in a month. For me, this isn't that big of a deal, but for some people it might be. My rationale is that I'm not really in a rush to get that money back right away, especially given that you're looking at 2% or 3% for the rewards. On that note, let's talk about the rewards. You're going to get 2% for all of your Apple Pay purchases and 3% for transactions at Apple. For me, this is going to be the big weakness of the card. And when you think about cards, the main point is mostly the multipliers and maybe other rewards it has. 2% is obviously not bad at all, but there are other cards that give you 2% on all of your transactions and not directly through Apple Pay. The other multiplier is 3% back at Apple and this is consistent with the old Barclays card. That one also gave you three points back for every dollar that you spent at Apple. If you're someone a bit more savvy, you can typically get about 5% cash back at a minimum through Apple if you buy gift cards, if you do a lot of other things with different cards, or alternatively, if you pick higher annual fee cards that have more features, then you might be able to get extended warranty beyond the Apple Care that you're buying. So if you buy something like a MacBook, you can end up buying that extended warranty, and then after that, you're getting another two years from your credit card. We don't really know what the details of the perks are here, but for me, that's just something you want to consider because I'll happily lose one or 2% difference. $2,000 at 2% is $40, and $2,000 at 3% is going to be $60. I'll happily pay an extra $20 for another two years of extended warranty. Moving on to paying the balance off. This is a feature that I really like about the card just because it encourages people to not pay interest. One thing that I've talked about a lot in prior videos is if you're someone paying interest on your credit card, you probably shouldn't be using your credit card. The main reason is because it doesn't make sense. You're getting maybe 2% to 5% in rewards, but if you're paying 19% in interest, you're going to lose out in the end. You want to pay off your balance in full every month. You do not want to pay interest. With this, it seems like they're really pushing people to understand their finances a bit better and to realize that, hey, if I pay an extra $100, I'm potentially saving $20 in the long term. So for me, this is a big thumbs up. I'm a very big fan of this. Have a question? Go text them. For me, this is a very big one because I, like a lot of other people, don't really like calling people if I don't need to. I don't mind talking to people. I don't mind having conversations, but I feel like talking on the phone is just a very abrasive experience. I'm guessing a lot of this is through AI-like responders, but I think that's still a good thing versus having to call. The final thing is the titanium card. So it has no numbers, it just has your name, and that's it. For me, I'm a pretty big fan of this because it removes or lowers the risk of identity theft. So even if they have your card, even if they're trying to use it, they can only do so much as they can physically do. They can't go online and try to buy memberships, or I've seen people, in my experience, try to go on Amazon and order things. If someone steals your mail and they're trying to order things to your address and trying to intercept those packages before that happens, they can't really do that if they don't have the number. I typically don't care about how much cards weigh, but I think it is something that some people do care about, and it might be that thing that tips them over the edge. So all those other things that we talked about, they're good, and then there might be some disadvantages, but the fact that it's a metal card and the fact that it has no annual fee, it might be an interesting thing to try out at least for a year or two. The main takeaway is that I think the card is very interesting and it's moving in the right direction. I like that it provides analytics. I like that it provides people with more information about interest and stuff, just so they know not to pay interest. I do dislike that it isn't as competitive as I feel like it could be, but the target audience for this, people who are likely to get this card, 
probably don't mind and for them this might be already a very competitive card compared to what they're used to. To people who are subscribed to this channel who are focused on rewards, I think this card is fine to add if you want to add it, maybe because it's an interesting card or maybe it's a talking topic, but I would only do it after you finish out your Chase 524 cards and maybe add other cards. This is a card that you can add to your base, doesn't really hurt for that, and maybe they'll do promotions in the future, but I would not burn a 524 slot or lose out on a really good sign-up bonus in order to get this card. For people who are new to the channel, there's going to be a lot of terms that you just heard that are going to be very confusing, but the idea is that there's a lot of rewards that you can generate from your normal spend, allowing you to take trips that you otherwise would not be willing to pay for. In the last year, I've gone to places like Bora Bora as well as Koh Samoy, and then I'm going to the Maldives later this year, places that I would otherwise never think I would go. You still do need to spend money on these trips, but the idea is that you can spend money on Michelin star meals or other things that you might want to do instead of on just getting there. Hopefully that was helpful and let me know if you guys have any questions. My question for you guys is what are your thoughts on this card? Do you think that they could have done a bit more? Do you think they'll have other promotions and stuff to make it a bit more competitive? Or do you think it's enough for their target audience? Let me and the community know down below. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, it really helps us out. If you know anyone else who'd benefit from what we just talked about, feel free to share the video with them because it's probably going to help them out. But otherwise, hope you guys liked it. See you guys next time.